Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics and lot of ortho topics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out daily MCQs with which you can brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the adductors and abductors of the hip joint. Last video was about the flexors. So let's start with the adductors first. So as we know, we have already talked about the PG adducts. That is the uh, mnemonic that we are remembering for adductors. So we'll start with the adductors. There is a pectineus and gracilis. That is the PG and then adductor magnus. Magnus means very big. Then adductor longus means very long. And brevis means short. So there is a big adductor, there is a long adductor and there is a small adductor that we need to keep in mind apart from your pectineus and gracilis. So let's start with the attachment of the adductors. Now there are a lot of adductors and they can have a very varying attachments but a general place where they are attached is your inferior ramus of pubis and they go to the linea aspera and attach on the femur. Okay. So they help in adduction obviously and also medial and lateral rotation. Now not all muscles help in medial or not all muscles help in lateral rotation. So under lateral rotation you have gracilis and adductor magnus and especially of the magnus the anterior part of the magnus helps in lateral rotation. Okay and then going to the medial rotation rest whatever is left that is adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus posterior part and the pectineus help in medial rotation. This basically is because of the position of your muscles that is more anterior muscles they do lateral rotation whereas more on the posterior side whichever muscles are there they will cause medial rotation. They also work as synergist to abductors in bilateral stance by enhancing side to side stability. Now what do I mean by this? Let's take Joe okay. Now he's standing on the ground like this and when he is in the bilateral stance, if he is trying to move side to side like this, side to side, shifting his weight from this leg to this leg, so he will be abducting his this leg and adducting his this leg and then abducting his this leg and adducting his this leg. So this synergistic movement that is occurring in bilateral stance is carried out by your uh, together movement of the adductors and abductors together in a synchrony, right? So that is what I mean by providing stability and enhancing the side to side movement. Also another important point is adductor longus gets very commonly strained in your hockey sports. Okay, something you can keep in mind adductor longus getting very commonly strained in hockey. So now coming to a question that adductors if you see they help in your adduction and then also they help your med in medial and lateral rotation which is very minimal. So what exactly major role do they play in human body? Are they really that important? That question arises in every person's mind even for me because flexors you can see when you're walking your flexors are required to push you forward extensors again to propel, your fo uh, propel you forward uh, extensors of the hip are very important median lateral rotation are also fairly important abductors especially are very important in maintaining your unilateral stance so what is the actual role of adductors? So well this is not clearly that well known but what we know is adductors form a major chunk of your leg muscles okay. So adductors they form 22.5 that's a lot of percentage given to the muscle mass. So among your all muscles uh, around your hip joint adductors form 22.5 percent whereas flexors just form 18.4 and abductors form 14.9 percent. So if you see this much of muscle mass is there in your leg and that is given by your adductors. So definitely they play a major role in your lower limb function. So that was about the adductors. Now let's move on to the abductors where you can clearly see what is their role and how important they are for your hip joint health. Another important pointer I would like to add is gracilis over here among all the adductors is the only two joint muscle. It crosses your knee joint as well as the 
hip joint and it goes and attaches near the pes anserinus right the sgs muscle where uh, on the medial side they go and attach right that is where the gracilis attaches and it's the only two joint muscle okay so now let's start with the abductors of the hip joint also known as the rotator cuff of the hip joint now this is a big giveaway that it is as important as rotator cuff in the shoulder okay so this is the main function of the abductors that is the stabilization rotator cuff what do they do in the shoulder joint they stabilize your glenohumeral joint right so this is how important the abductors are in the hip joint so under abductors we have two muscles the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus gluteus medius is analogous to supraspinatus and gluteus minimus is analogous to subscapularis it is more on the lateral and posterior superior part of your greater trochanter okay so just like your greater tubercle over here in the humerus over here there is greater trochanter and it is lateral posterior and superior just like your supraspinatus somewhere over there and on the other side it goes and attaches to the lateral surface of the ilium it has three parts there is the anterior part middle and posterior part which is similar to your deltoid muscle in the shoulder so don't get confused between deltoid and supraspinatus again its function is similar to supraspinatus that is stability but structurally if you see anterior middle and posterior part it is similar to deltoid right so it is active in hip flexion the anterior part similar to deltoid when you are doing flexion and then the posterior part is active in extension similar to deltoid again posterior part active in extension it can also do some amount of lateral rotation okay so that is also an important point that uh, the posterior one posterior part of the gluteus medius can cause extension and also lateral rotation in hip flexion all the portions will medially rotate okay so apart from lateral rotation the gluteus medius also helps in medial rotation if you remember we had studied in our classification let us go back to that so if you see here medial rotation we had learned gtg right gluteus medius tfl and gluteus minimus so see gluteus medius is there for medial rotators too so this will come under the gluteus medius as a function that is the medial rotation okay so that's what you saw it helps in medial rotation when your hip is in flexion all the portions okay all the portions the anterior middle and posterior all of them will help in medial rotation when your hip is in flexion whereas only the posterior part will help in lateral rotation in a neutral hip now going to the last point that is all the portion of the muscle help in abduction that is obvious because we are studying it under abductors so gluteus medius all the portion help in abduction then in flexion they help in medial rotation that's why it was under medial rotators and then uh, it is very analogous to supraspinatus and the three parts are analogous to deltoid where anterior will help in flexion and posterior will help in Uh, extension as well as lateral rotation and together they do abduction too okay so now let's go on to the gluteus minimus gluteus minimus is over here analogous to subscapularis the outer surface of the ilium is where it is attached and then again it inserts to the greater trochanter so somewhere near the greater trochanter is where the attachment of gluteus medius and minimus lies which help them in abducting the femur so apart from abduction they also help in flexion so with flexion there is also medial rotation again the point of medius and minimus comes that they are a medial rotator right so that is the function of your gluteus minimus that is abduction and with flexion there is also medial rotation another very important function is the stability through attachment of the capsule now this is one of the most important things you will know under the gluteus minimus that there is a socket and then there is a head of the femur right and there is capsule around this so this capsule has attachment of gluteus minimus so the function of stability is provided to your hip joint through the attachment to the capsule of the hip joint which gives it the femoral head stability so the femoral head is stabilized inside your uh, socket of the hip joint during flexion extension abduction adduction medial and lateral rotation all the movements during this movements the stability to your head of the femur is provided by your gluteus minimus through its attachment to the capsule this is a very important point and why am i saying this because whenever there is issue with the stability of the hip joint gluteus minimus and medius should come in your mind at first okay so these are the main muscles which provide the stability to your hip joint
Next, going to the last point that both function as abductors that we all know and stabilizers in the unilateral stance. Unilateral stance is when Joe will be standing on his one leg and when he is standing on the one leg, his pelvis on this side will tend to drop down. But this will be prevented by the abduction, abduction and Joe will be back into the right uh, alignment of his pelvis. Again, I will be talking about this in detail in bilateral and unilateral stance topic. So stay tuned for that. So that is about the function of the gluteus medius and minimus. Another small point I wanted to add over here is it works the best with isometric abduction torque in neutral. So gluteus minimus has the most activation when it is isometrically contracting in a neutral hip, not in an abducted hip. Okay. When the hip is in neutral, that's when the abductors like gluteus minimus work the best. Another important mention that I wanted to make is when there is lot of abduction force that needs to be produced, your sartorius and also superior portion of the gluteus maximus help in abduction at the hip joint. Okay. Uh, sartorius and the superior portion of the gluteus maximus and also sometimes TFL but that is tensor facial order but it will help in abduction but when your hip is in more of a flexed position so when you are flexing the hip and then trying to abduct that is when TFL will be working but if you are just trying to abduct gluteus medius and minimus will be the prime movers and then when there is lot of force uh, that needs to be generated your gluteus maximus and also sartorius will help in abduction. Okay, so now let's summarize the topic. First, we started with adductors. We saw how they are attached and they cause medial and lateral rotation. They also work synergistically with abductors to enhance side to side stability. They also form a major chunk of your lower limb muscles that is 22.5%. Then we went to abductors. Under abductors we saw gluteus medius which is similar to supraspinatus and gluteus minimus which is similar to subscapularis muscle. Right? Then under this we saw there were anterior, middle and posterior parts which together were helping in uh, medial rotation, lateral rotation and abduction at the hip joint whereas your gluteus minimus was mostly helping in stabilizing the femoral head that was the main important thing that we learned over here and also another mention I wanted to make is over here weakness of gluteus minimus what will it do it will make your hip more unstable which can lead to overuse injuries like bursitis and also chronic injuries like osteoarthritis of the hip joint so the health of hip joint can be really taken care by working on your gluteus medius minimus and other muscles around the hip joint. So now let's go back to the classification and have a look at it again. So till now we have covered the flexors that is the trips muscle. Then today we co cover the adductors that is PG adducts and also the abductors gluteus medius and minimus right. We also saw how gluteus medius and minimus are included under medial rotators over here that is medius minimus. So with that we finish off the topic. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out. And also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. And see you soon in the next video.